Today on Dr. Phil, she made a big mistake. You moved your daughter's boyfriend into your house when she was 16? Now she's paying for it. They live like slobs. That house was like that. You sleep till 3 in the afternoon. Not true. Yes, you know. I mean, somebody tell me the truth. Plus, we have created a monster by never telling her no. She will throw tantrums. 13 and spoiled rotten. Do you cut up her food? Yeah, cut it all up. And she's 13? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, free. Take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Bell. at this charming suburban home. Looks great, right? The front door hides a secret, and inside, you'll find the real story. Boxes strewn about, an old mattress in the living room, dirty dishes piled high, filthy carpeting, holes in the walls. Ugh. Not a pretty picture. Sort of like a vacant house you'd expect squatters to inhabit. Well, my first guest, Tracy, didn't abandon her house when she moved out six months ago, and she didn't let squatters move in. Instead, she allowed her 22-year-old daughter, Ashley, to live there rent-free, where she sleeps all day, and according to mom, freeloads all night. When the economy crashed, I downsized to an apartment, and my daughter and her boyfriend still live in the bank-owned home for free. Andrew and I are staying here because we can't afford to get an apartment right now. Ashley and Andrew are both moochers. I am not a moocher. It couldn't be farther from the truth. Ashley and Andrew are both broke. I pay for 100% of all of their expenses. I'm paying for all my bills. I think Tracy is trying to make a bigger deal of what's really going on. Ashley and Andrew don't pay for anything. Gas, food, toothpaste, deodorant, toilet paper, nothing. The only time I ask my mom for things is if I work for it. Supporting myself and Ashley and Andrew is financially draining. I'm not sure if I can pay bills because I'm paying their bills first. Ashley and Andrew swear that they've done everything they possibly could to get a job. I've been applying to many places and I just haven't heard anything back from anyone. The most frustrating thing is if Ashley and Andrew aren't working, they will sleep all day long. I don't know what else to do. I've tried the tough love thing, but I always end up caving back in because I can't stand the thought of my daughter not eating. So I think my mom's making a very big deal out of this. Ashley and Andrew live in a fantasy world. I'm done. I can't take it anymore. Okay. Now, we're going to meet those kids in a minute, but I want to get your point of view, and then we're going to get theirs, and I got a sneaking suspicion that they're going to disagree with your ideas here. What, do you agree? Yes, I totally agree. Um, but mm -hmm. your view is what? That you're being taken advantage of? For many years. For many years. And that your daughter's a moocher and that she's exploiting you and her boyfriend too? They just expect everything. How did you get in this situation? Uh, I'm a single mom. She doesn't have a father in her life. I want to make sure that I'm the mother, the father, everything that she needs in her life. But now I look back and wish I wouldn't have done everything, given her everything that I did, because I did give her everything she could possibly want. And you did that why? I mean, was this a guilt thing? Yes. Because let me, let me tell you, one of the reasons that I agreed to do this story is because it's a cautionary tale. It's a cautionary tale for parents out there right now that are parenting from guilt. I, I didn't give them the life I planned, so I'm going to buy them the life that I planned. I'm going to, they're going to have the clothes, the toys, the games, the cars, the trips, the whatever. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do that for them. That's exactly and what I've done. So, so you think that's what you did here? I know that's what I did. Where are Lori and Todd? You, you guys are down here? Yes. Okay, because I'm going to be talking to you later in the show. And this is a cautionary tale, because your daughter's how old? Thirteen. Thirteen. And you're hearing her say some things that y'all say to yourselves right now, right? Yep. 
Yes. They have a 13-year-old daughter. That's about when it started. Yeah. And so you, you pay close attention. I'm getting to y'all. <laughs> now, Tracy returned to the house to show us just how Ashley and her boyfriend have, in, in your view, trashed it. But when she got there, Tracy was in for a surprise. Apparently, all it takes for her daughter uh, to clean it up was a phone call that the Dr. Phil show was coming with some cameras. Take a look. Ashley and Andrew live like slobs. Ashley and Andrew will go three weeks without doing the dishes. Sometimes the house is dirty, but I mean, anybody's house is dirty sometimes. So I take care of the house. I'm always cleaning this house. I wouldn't even go use the bathroom. Hair on the floor, towels everywhere, clothes, dog pee in the corner. Disgusting. Ash and Andrew have no cable, no TV, no telephone. It's very tough for me to go visit the house. It's not the house that I left. Looks a little different than the last time I was here. I don't see any piles of dog feces on the floor. I guess I should have called the Dr. Phil show a long time ago. House actually looks pretty decent. They do have a little bit of food in the freezer. Package of hot dogs and some ice. This is the pantry that I always kept stock full from top to bottom. Now there's nothing. It looks like they do have a few things in there. This one area is where they're confined to. They're in this room 90% of the time when they're in this house. They even have their own little fridge now, so they don't have to go down to, all the way down the stairs to the big fridge in the kitchen. We have a microwave, so they don't have to run all the way downstairs to warm food up. We have a collection of barn animals, three rabbits inside. They've obviously come through and uh, made it look really nice for Dr. Phil. I'm freaked out because it's so clean and bare, but I'm also just wondering why she couldn't do this sooner. Why is it more important for her to make the house look nice for Dr. Phil than to make it look nice for the person that built it for her, which is me. Oh, okay, now, she's living there with her boyfriend, right? right? And he's here today mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Did he live in the house when you were there? Yes. When did he move in? Oh, probably four and a half years ago. Okay, you moved your daughter's boyfriend into your house when she was 16? Yes. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> Seriously, I don't get, I don't get that. I, I wasn't. Because I've raised two boys. Robin and I have two boys, and, and we raised those boys. And I, I think back to when either one of our boys were 16, moving a girlfriend into our house. Did, did, did that ever occur? We never had this conversation. Did that ever occur to you? Never, never. Uh, under what theory would we uh -huh. have moved a little girl into our house? <laughs> we would not have moved a little girl in for them, maybe for me, you know, just to dress. Yeah, you would have loved to have had a little girl. <laughs> not for them. <laughs> never. I, I'm sorry. I, I, hell, tell me how that came up. He's 18, she's 16. I'm going to move him into, were they sexually active at the time? Um, Obviously they were, but did you know they were? As far as I knew, no. He was, he was at my house all the time. Um, he had family issues. Um, I was dealing with medical issues. I, I wasn't right. I don't know how to explain it other than it was the worst mistake I've ever made. I've regretted it every day since I did it. Right now, those two are living in this house we saw. Yes. And this house is in foreclosure. Right. They'll be homeless. Yes because they don't have jobs, but they do work for you some. Right. Okay, and by the way, they say you pay them sometimes and you don't pay them sometimes. <laughs> they say you pay them based on your mood. And they're gonna tell their side of this, and to, to get your side of it, if I understand this clearly, is you're saying, I, I raised a daughter that, by the way, seems to me to be a lovely young woman yeah. that seems to not have a lot of traction right now in life, uh, is living in a very compromised situation, in kind of a vacant house, living in one room, just existing. And you're saying, I, I haven't equipped her to survive. And if I fell off the world tomorrow, she's ill-equipped. And, I, and I'm, I'm panicked at what would happen. Yes. Right? Very. So you're saying, so I admit that I didn't prepare her, so what do I do now? D do I get it? Yes. We've got a couple coming up with a 13-year-old version of how you're describing your daughter. But if you would have told me at 13 that her boyfriend would be living in my house when she was almost 17, yeah, I would have said absolutely not. That's ridiculous. You don't do that. Yeah. Well, wait till you hear this story.
All right, next. Tracy's daughter says she's extremely offended, offended that her mother thinks she's living off of her. Well, we're going to hear her side and her boyfriend's side when we come back. It doesn't make me feel good that my mom calls me a moocher. Growing up, I gave Ashley absolutely everything she ever wanted. The spoiling kind of ended when I became an adult. I don't know how to say no to Ashley. Ashley called me at 1.30 in the morning, three days ago. Woke me up and said, Mom, I don't have any cigarettes. Can I come get five bucks so I can get a pack of cigarettes? And I lost it. I said, yeah, go ahead, come over. She walked in the door, I said, really? Is this seriously still happening? You're 22 years old, and you're gonna call me at 1.30 in the morning because you don't have money for cigarettes, and neither does your boyfriend. And I did give her the $5. Now, 1.30 in the morning, she's at your house. How did she get there? Drove the car that I paid for. Okay, where'd she get the gas? The money that I'd given her earlier that week for the gas. To put in a car that you paid for. Ashley says it's offensive that her mother feels this way and she wants to tell her side of the story. Take a look at this. Ashley is a lazy, entitled moocher, and I've made her that way. It doesn't make me feel good that my mom calls me a moocher. Growing up, I gave Ashley absolutely everything she ever wanted. My mom did give me a lot of things when I was younger, but the spoiling kind of ended when I became an adult. I don't know how to say no to Ashley. My relationships have definitely been affected by the mooching. She always tries to blame her failed relationships on me. When you're in a relationship with somebody, you don't want your 22-year-old daughter calling you at 1 o'clock in the morning saying she needs $20 for gas. I don't believe how anyone could say that a child was the main reason for a breakup. I've had relationships end because they just don't want to deal with the daughter drama. My mom blames me for a lot of things in her life that she shouldn't. She doesn't want to take any of the blame. OK, you've been watching so far, right? Yes. And what do you think about what your mom has had to say? It sounds to me like she's taken plenty of accountability and responsibility for this. I'm very surprised about a couple things that she said. Which are? That she felt bad, bad for Andrew when he moved in and that he was having family issues because he was fine with his family. Well, what's your point? You're, you're how old now? 22. D does it seem in retrospect, does it make sense to you for a 16-year-old girl to have her boyfriend move into her house? No. I mean, I wouldn't let my daughter do it. And I was very thankful that she did it. Is this a serious relationship you have with him? Yes. Yeah. And how's he doing on taking care of you and providing for you and protecting you and nurturing you and well, all the things that people do in relationships? Right now, um, neither one of us are doing very good. But he has had many jobs in the past, and he always took care of me when he had those jobs. Mm -hmm. But just right now, he doesn't. Right now, we're going through a pretty tough time. Mm -hmm. So how would you say your life is working for you overall right now? Life's hard for me right now. Yeah. Are you, do you have a job? With my mom, part time. Why do you work for your mother? Um, she owns her own painting company, and Andrew and I are her only employees right now. Mm -hmm. She has had other employees in the past, but right now, it's, it's just us working. But why work for your mother? Why, why not just go out and get her a, a job? Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, see, my theory is that if you don't have a job, then your job is finding a job. Right. And like if you had a job, you would work 40 or 50 hours a week. You would like get up at 7 o'clock and you would shower and then you would go out and you would work all day long and then you would come home. And so you would be gone by 7 and you would be home by 6. And so if you don't have a job, you would spend all of that time looking for a job. So you'd get up, you would be showered at 7, you would be dressed, you'd be out the door, and you would be out looking for a job. And you would spend all day looking for a job, every day, all day, looking for a job. Those are the people that find jobs. Do you do that? It's hard when you don't have a phone 
to call anyone or you don't have gas in your car or you don't have a, access to a computer all the time. So whenever I have access to those things, that's what I'm doing. So that would be no. <laughs> My question to you was, do you get up every day and go look for a job every day? where you knock on a door, you go to the mall, you go from store to store to store to store, you go to fast food alley and you knock on every door to door to door to door to door, or you go whatever, you go knock on doors in the neighborhood, can I rake your leaves, can I fix your fence, can I work in your house, can I do whatever, you go knock on every door till you get a job and you get paid. And I'm asking you, do you do that? And you say, no, you gave me five excuses. Well, it's hard when you don't have a computer, you don't have a phone, you don't have gas for your car, you don't have this, you don't have that. And the answer is no, you don't. You sleep till three in the afternoon, true? Not true. Not true, does she sleep till three in the afternoon? Yes, she does. I mean, somebody tell me the truth. Don't tell me I... she sleeps till three in the afternoon. If she's not, don't tell me you aren't if you are. Tell me the truth. The truth is I don't know the last six months because I have not lived there, I have my own place now. <clears throat> but six months ago and before that yes if we were not working they would not come out of the bedroom until sometimes four or five o'clock in the afternoon and coming out of the bedroom doesn't mean that we're sleeping that just means that we haven't came well, were, any, were, were, were people coming to your bedroom and knocking on the door to offer you jobs no so i'm saying if you if you want a job you have to get out because you can do what you need to do is there a day in the last month that you've looked for a job 10 hours a day not for 10 hours no Eight hours, six, five, six four. Six hours, yeah. Where you've gone out and knocked on doors and interviewed for jobs. On the, applying for jobs on the internet, not out no. for six hours. Yeah, the truth that is that that doesn't work. If you endorse her lifestyle, that's very sad. If you accept your lifestyle, your, your station in life right now, that's very sad. That, that's very sad. I would hope neither of you do that. There is a deadline looming how much longer can Andrew and Ashley live like squatters in a foreclosed home? At any point, the bank could show up and say, you're out. And if they have no job and nowhere to go, they become homeless overnight. It could happen before the end of this sentence. We'll add Andrew to this conversation when we come back. Andrew is just annoying. Everything Andrew does annoys me. I'm angry with Tracy. Her telling everyone else about how we're moochers. I want him to live up to the man that I want my daughter to spend the rest of life with. Well, we've been talking with Tracy, who admits that she spoiled her daughter, Ashley, when she was younger. She says she turned her into a lazy and entitled adult that she is today. Ashley disagrees with her mom. She says she and her boyfriend, Andrew, are struggling to make ends meet on her own. She says that's true, but she says, look, we're trying. It is tough out there right now. Everybody knows it's a tough job market and a tough economy, but it's not that we're not trying. Here's what Andrew has to say. Andrew is just annoying. Everything Andrew does annoys me. I hate the way he eats. I hate the way he walks. I hate the way he talks. He's just annoying. I'm angry with Tracy. Her telling everyone else about how we're moochers and we're this and we're that. Andrew has never mooched off of my mom. Andrew is always giving me everything that he could. I want him to live up to the man that I want my daughter to spend the rest of her life with. She'll tell Ashley, oh, he's such a loser. She doesn't think that we should be together. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching everything, right? Yeah. What would you like to add to the conversation we're having so far? Just that um, Tracy seems like a lot of the stuff she had said isn't the truth at all. Well, clear it up. Sleeping till 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. There was a point when we did do that. We've done that before. We slept in. I look for jobs. She kind of made it sound like I've never had a job. The whole time I've been living there, the whole time that. I've been dating I Ashley. Have a job. Um, I have had a job. Okay, I've had I've had about six jobs. I work in the summer most and of the time. And you're 24. You've had six jobs. Why are y'all living in that house? Looks like oh that squalor. Okay, that's another thing. That house was like that when she was but, living there. She contributed to the way that that house but looks now. Why are now. you living Her, like that? That's not. 
from the dogs. That's from someone that she brought over wearing their shoes all the time, tracking tar into the house. Yeah, oh, I don't care what that is. That, that's nasty looking. It does look yellow against the wall where dogs pee against the wall. We've had it shampooed before, but. I mean, that's not, that's, you can't blame everything on us. I'm not saying You've that. I never there. said that the carpet was completely <clears throat> because of you guys. That's not the point of this. Okay, you have questions that, that I, I want to answer. Do y'all have any questions? No, I, I just no. have stuff that I feel like wasn't said. Like, I've, I've worked with her <clears throat> so many times over the years that I've been with Ashley in the years that I've been living there. And when they work for, with me, it's great, but they have to be on time. No, you need to stop hiring them, okay? That's called enmeshed. You're getting enmeshed in their lives. There's two... You, you ask me, what can I do? If they don't work for me, I'm paying their bills anyway, so at least I can get some okay, work out of the Okay, you need deal. to That's stop that, too. Okay, now listen, you ask me, and I'm going to tell you, and then you can either do it or not. I understand okay. that. I, I don't control this. All I can do is tell you. You need to quit hiring these people because it's, you're too involved. There's, there's other people to hire, and there's other jobs to get. You're over-involved. You need to stop that. And you say, well, I might as well hire them because I'm paying their bills anyway. Well, here's good news number two. You need to stop that. Necessity is the mother of invention. And as long as you continue to enable the behavior that you don't want, it's going to keep happening. Now, you shouldn't have to come all the way here for me to tell you that, but since you did, I am. You need to stop hiring them, and you need to stop paying their bills. Listen, two wrongs don't make a right. You said when she was growing up, you, you, you parented from guilt. It didn't prepare her the first time. It isn't preparing her now. So stop doing that. You're doing this for you, not for her. You're doing this because it lessens your anxiety. It lessens your guilt. You feel better. So you need to stop making yourself feel better at her expense. Can I say something? Not yet. Okay. So she can okay? okay? Do you get that? I do. So you need to stop hiring her and you need to stop paying her bills. One and two. That's two key things. Okay, I'm sorry. Now Go she ahead. says she pays 100% of my bills. But that's not true? It's not true. We work okay. for a lot of times, we'll do jobs and she'll say, okay, if you, you know, if you work real hard and get this done in this amount of time, you, you get it done fast, I'll pay you extra. Right. And I told them uh, that. I'll pay I you won't. extra and she doesn't. Really? 90% of the time she really? won't. She'll say, I don't have that. I don't okay. have the who money. Made, who made, who made I your guys' carpet in the last two months? Hold on, hold on. Wait, a minute. Wait a minute. Look, you're getting ready to spend five minutes of my life I can't get back. And I... <laughs> Th this is why you shouldn't have them working for you. She'll owe us money sometimes to where our bills are late for months and months. I have and never months. ever owed either okay, one. But see, of this is going to all be solved. See, this is going to all be solved. But I, really? But see, this is all solved. You, you see how much gets fixed Can you by just number one. Please have them explain to me when did I borrow money? No, it doesn't from matter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See, you can't give me that five minutes back. Uh, <laughs> see, this is that five minutes you can't give me back. I'm getting old. I need that five. See, but this is, see, you see what's solved when you quit, when you quit working together? Are you seeing a pattern here? And that's another thing. She likes to do stuff for Ashley just so she can hold it over her head, just so she can throw it in her face. Yeah, just like with the car, that. with the car, she said when that, when that was first, when she first got it, it was for Ashley graduating. Okay, it was supposed to be, you know, I'll, I'll put this money down for you 
for the car for graduating. I never told you and you had then, to get a job and make every payment, keep the job and keep your grades up. I didn't tell you that. You she, weren't she around, kept, so you can't kept, testify to that. We well, all don't need around. me for this. Is there anything else that you wanted to get said? Yeah, I mean, there is. I, I never had any problems with my family, ever. She okay. said she felt sorry for me. I was living on, I was living on my own with some friends. And but I was going over, I was going, I was going to my, I was going to her house a lot. And I would fall asleep sometimes, but sometimes, I, you know, I would leave. She's the one who said, he's, he's here all the time. Why don't you just move in? No, it wasn't. I said, I said, oh, you know, well, I, you know, I guess, That'll work as if that's what Ashley wants, and that's you know that's what happened. A Ashley didn't really. Ashley wasn't begging her to let me move in. It didn't happen like that at all. If you listen to anything I'm saying, you either feed off this, or you're going to take my advice, because you are over involved. Necessity is the mother of invention. Stop working these guys in your business. Stop doing it and stop paying the bills. You need to sever the financial ties here. Sever it. Have a relationship with your daughter as a daughter. Have no financial ties whatsoever. None. Zip. Zero. I don't know how to not do a. That. That's what I need help with. Well, I'm. T it's real easy to not do something. It's harder to teach you to do something. You just don't do it. You learn how to say no, no. Not going to do it. Stop asking. Don't do it. Because I'm telling you something, every time you do it, you're doing it for you and at her expense. You said, I want her to learn to do for herself, then stop doing for her. You crippled her by spoiling her. So she entered the world without the skill sets necessary to do it. Don't do it again. It's not too late for her to learn. Are you going to stop hiring them? Yes, I am. Are you going to stop paying their bills? Yes, I am. Loaning them money, giving them money. You need to learn to say no. It's just that simple. They're able-bodied. They can make money. They can get jobs. But they won't as long as they don't have to. Right. Okay? It's just that simple. So, but, but and you've got some guilt here that you need to deal with, and I will get you some help with that. I really will. I will get you some help with that. This will seem so clear to you in a very short period of time. You will look back and go, oh, my God. I already am doing that. Yeah, well, You're I saying that, so. there's, that there's no, any, anybody that works for their mother, that's wrong. She's not going to hire you two anymore. Yeah, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but you're saying that's, that's wrong? That's wrong for, for, us to work with, for us to work with her. It's wrong. Yes. It is? Yes. It's not important that she understands. It's important that she understands because she's the one that does the hiring. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I won't work for her again now. Good. I mean, so but, then we're on the same page. You'll support me. You really shouldn't. You shouldn't work. There. All right. When we come back, we're going to meet a mom and dad who are sitting down here watching their future flash before their eyes because they give in to their daughter's demands and say they've got a monster on their hands. This could potentially be um, even worse. We'll be right back. With my daughter, she doesn't get her way. She will throw tantrums, kicks, punches, fits, yell, scream. We spoil her rotten. My wife and I have both enabled her. Most of the time, it is just easier just to give her what she wants rather than deal with all the drama. husband Todd say their 13 year old daughter throws tantrums manipulates them to get what she wants they're fed up but admit they are unable to say a critical word no my 13 year old daughter's behavior has gotten so out of control that she controls the whole household she actually rules everything we do when she doesn't get her way she will throw tantrums stop videotaping me oh my god Kicks, punches, fits, yell, scream. My daughter treats me like a doormat, orders me around. She'll always say, shut the frick up. Zero respect. My daughter is a total slob. Wherever my daughter sits, 
there's going to be a stash of chips, a couple drinks in every room. She never picks up after herself, never. She tells me that I can't force her to do any kind of chores because they have child labor laws and she will report me. We spoil her rotten. We have given her the iPad, the iPhone, Xbox 360, Wii's. For her birthday, she was only given $150 this year, and she told us we were cheap and selfish. She's never satisfied. Every time you get her one thing, she wants more. My wife and I have both enabled her. Most of the time it is just easier just to give her what she wants rather than deal with all the drama. We have created a monster by never telling her no. And she's had zero discipline. At this point, I, I don't have any answers. I don't know what to do with her. We are totally at our wits end. OK. Um, let me just say up front, I, I got some good news for you, OK? I'm not here to throw y'all under the bus. You would fit nicely. <laughs> um, but I'm not here to throw you under the bus because you need a solution, right? Yep. But you, you, you recognize you got a problem here. I, I have such a big yes. problem. Right? Yeah, that's right. And, and you understand that every year older she gets, yep. this is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get harder and harder to deal with. Yep. But yet, you two didn't write in to me. Nope. She did. This is your other daughter. This is your 18-year-old daughter. We thought daughter. it was crazy that she wrote in to you. Yeah. Why did you write in? <laughs> because I go to college, and I still live at home, and I have to be the person d around it all day. I'm affected. Now, why did she write in and you guys didn't? Because we were just planning on living that way, I guess, forever. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I believe that we try. We we always try. We, we there's not a day that goes by that I don't think that we, we try to do the right thing. We got the tail wagging the dog here, right? We got a, we've got a 13 year old, and by the way, we're not showing her face and we're not saying her name right. because she's a minor, and I don't mm -hmm. think you hold minors up to ridicule because her behavior is so atrocious yeah. that it would be embarrassing. And you, you're letting her get away with this, right? We've got a 13-year-old child that is terrorizing and dominating one, two adults and an older sister. Yes. And she tells you to shut up 20 times a day. All the time. Shut the freak up. When you tell her you can't afford something, she just attacks you physically. She'll push me and call me cheap and selfish. Well, you fix dinner for the family, but she doesn't eat that. Right. You have to go get her something different right. takeout. Yes. Even for breakfast. All the time. You use coupons sometimes. Yeah, I never have till recently. I and what does she call you when you use? A scumbag. Because you use coupons. Yes. Why are you a scumbag? Because you use coupons. Because she thinks that's just embarrassing and makes you look cheap. What did she do when you had your prom? Um, she cried and complained that it wasn't fair that I had a day about me. That it's she should be getting me, yeah. some compensation for my <laughs> joy. <laughs> what did you give her for her birthday? This, this year? Yeah. $150. And she's 13? You give her $150? And I assume she was thrilled with that. She was, that was, Not at all. A, that was the worst birthday. That was the least we've ever given her. So when she was 12, what did she get? An iPad. No, 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 that, that was, was the, the year before. before. We oh, took she was 11, she got a <laughs> knock Yeah, that was when they first came See, out. See, Dad, oh, you're putting your job in a corner. It's a hard act to follow. Uh, we, gave, is what it is. we gave her no. 300 cash and took her to Carlo's Bakery in Hoboken, New Jersey. For a cake. For a cake. Yeah, so when she got to 150, what did she do? She just wasn't happy. And she cried. cried and she kept asking for more. And she ordered dresses. <laughs> She, she ordered, ordered, dre ordered dresses. dresses at the end of, uh, you know, it was September. And that, you know, dresses that she would not be able to wear, I couldn't, I, I kept saying, well, you're not making any sense. Do not make that decision. You know, you're only having $150. Buy something that you're not going to grow out of by next spring when you go to wear them. They're not going to fit you. You've wasted your money. Uh, I don't care. That's, that's what I want. It's my birthday. I'm, I'm going to spend it on my money. It's not just money. It's her personality. It's the way she... So what happens when you do discipline her? What, do you ground her? They we say try. they're going to, and it doesn't last. They all talk, no action. So do you ground her? Yeah. 
What, what does she do when you say you're grounded? No, no I'm not. not. Just no, said, not. yeah, whatever. Nice try. If I'm doing the grounding, I try to do it in short. You're, you know, you're grounded for two hours from the television <laughs> for little things. Uh, for the evening, you know, little, there's no big punishments in that sense. I don't know, I mean, it sounds different as you're saying it, but it depends on the situation. Yeah. Now, let me see if I read this right, because I'm, sometimes I think maybe the computer spits out things that could not possibly be correct. Do, do you cut up her food? Oh, I didn't um, even realize I was doing it, honestly. And then I just thought about it one day. I'm like, you're 13. What am I doing? You cut up her food. Cut it all up. I butter it. And now I know that's crazy. When did that hit you? Um, that hit me about one month ago. And she, mm -hmm. uh, she almost died when I said I'm not cutting it. She said, why are you stopping that? I don't know how to do it. <laughs> true. Obviously, we're here because we know that we're not I, I, right Yeah, this is skills. so embarrassing. I, I just, I need help. I don't know what to do with her. Okay. Well, um, okay. We're going to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, I'm going to tell you something that's really going to upset you. I'm sure. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you what to do about it. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Now, I said there's something that's going to upset you, and I'll tell you what it is. She's close to being in violation of school requirements in terms of her tardiness, and so the truancy can kick in. Yeah, I know. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And what's going to happen is the school's going to report this, and basically what can happen is they can investigate this, find out what's going on, and you two can be found guilty of child abuse. And so let me tell you why. Negligence is child abuse. And if you are unable to get your child to comply with the educational regimen because they won't go to school, you can't get them there, that's your fault, not the child's fault. So they can come down on you guys. So she's now putting you in harm's way for negligently parenting this child by not getting her where she's going. You, you don't want that trouble. No, I See, know. This, this kid has to get involved. Look, here's what's happening here. You've got a really tall two-year-old. You've got, <laughs> you've got yeah. infantile tyrant here. This, you, you've got a tyrant that is just giving you hell. She's just gotten taller. But the level of development is still very infantile. Yeah. It's very demanding. Right. I want what I want when I want it, and I want it right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this has to stop right now. I don't know how to do that. Well, you're going to learn we, how to do that. We, we, we do talk about it. I mean, if we were able to ask and, and honestly say, she, my wife can you know, verify that it's been a major concern of mine for years that I've asked and asked and, and would say to her, we've got to stick together. Once we make a plan, let's stick <clears> to it. Right. I'll leave the room and she'll have changed that policy. And that's no longer what well, mom said I could. Yeah, well, so it's hard listen. for, you know. I have no excuses. It's, this is that's not. What happens. This is not your daughter's problem. It's our problem. This is a family problem. Definitely. Mm -hmm. She's the. She's what we call the target patient. She's mm -hmm. the squeaky wheel. Mm -hmm. But this is the family's problem here. Sure. Because it. She wasn't born this way. She's been shaped into this. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've been caving for a long time. Oh, yeah. And it takes a whole family to create this kind of dysfunction. And we could take her off and say, okay, you're going to have to straighten up. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. Then we could put her right back in this dysfunctional family situation, and it'd go right back to what it was. Right. You have to change. You have to change. Mm -hmm. Or it's not going to get any better. So there has to be a family intervention here, or this isn't going to get better. You've got to grow a spine. You've got to grow a spine, and you're going to have to do what I call some commando parenting. This girl's getting ready to go into shock. Yeah. Because you, you go back to basics. You strip this back to basics where she has a room with a bed mm -hmm. and a towel for a shower. Now, you're not going to have to shave her head or whatever, <laughs> but she's going to go back to basics, and she's going to learn that what she considers to be privilege, rights are, in fact, privileges Privilege. that are earned 
by treating people with dignity and respect, doing different things in terms of chores, school, things of that nature, she's going to learn that she has to do these things properly, and you guys are going to have to follow a regimen, and it is very clear to me that you cannot do this at your, on your own. So what I am going to do is I am going to get a family therapist to get involved here and come into this home and get involved with everybody. And when you don't comply, your ass is mud. <laughs> okay? Okay. Now, I know. I'm a boy. I want I'm a boy. it. I want it. Okay? Because I'm talking about bringing in Rambo <laughs> here. I, I believe you. I do. Well, trust me, it's like me in a skirt. Oh. <laughs> okay, because you are a big part of the problem. You are a big part of the mm -hmm. problem. And if you don't change, she has no hope. I know. I believe you. I want the help. And we're going to turn this kid around where she takes some pride in herself and what she earns and, and can take some pride in. Okay? Yes, definitely. definitely. All right, definitely. fair enough? Yes, yeah. thank you All so right. much. All right, next, I'm going to tell you three things you need to do to keep from spoiling your child to the point that they don't develop the skills they need to go to the next level of life. We'll be right back. Well, I want to thank all of our guests for coming here today. I said we're talking about cautionary tales. And you know, I've always said that we want to love our children. We all want to give them things that we didn't have. But there is a point at which that can get dysfunctional. So I said there were three things that I want you to focus on in preparing your child. Number one, your child needs to experience mastery over the world. That means they need to see that they have the ability to make things happen. If I do A, I get B. That's a real empowering feeling. So that's terribly important. Number two, they need to observe themselves recover from disappointment or failure. If they try something as it doesn't work and they go, wow, I bounced back. And number three, they need to recognize the power of giving. Think about that when you're looking at what you're planning for your child. Go to drphil.com. You can find so much more about how you can give your child the tools they need to be a success in this world. Thanks for being here. So long. Thanks, guys.